I'm here with Professor Oliver Hart of uh, Harvard uh, University. Um, Oliver, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining me uh, this morning. We're at a conference, the EGCI inaugural summit on responsible capitalism. What does responsible capitalism mean for you? Well, I think it means that individuals in a capitalist society have to be more responsible. Um, and that means uh, everybody, including shareholders. So um, when people talk about businesses being more responsible, I think they should be guided by the wishes of the people of their owners. And I don't I don't think it's possible to have a capitalism that is more responsible than the individuals in our society. Um, you know, we, we can have we have we can have government regulating and that's very important. But once we um, you know, accept that level of regulation or whatever they, the governments have done, then, um, you know, as individuals, uh, uh, whether we're workers, consumers, uh, shareholders, then we have to be able to express our views and, and uh, we should be doing that, uh, hopefully in a responsible way. Mm. But, um, uh, you know, just to take an example, if, if a company, if its owners are entirely selfish people who couldn't care less about anything Mm. other than themselves and their monetary return, it's hard to me to imagine that the company, you know, can be responsible then. Mm. Mm. I mean, it could be, but their managers wouldn't be acting in the interests of their shareholders. So mm. I think what we need is for, for people to realize that, uh, uh, I mean, a lot of people to realize that companies are not sort of independent uh, in, of, of their owners and uh, they don't, they, they should be, as I say, repeating myself here a bit, mm. they're guided by mm. whatever level of response, social responsibility their owners have. Of course, they, and, and once owners realize that, then um, they also may, may decide to be, become more responsible mm. themselves mm. because they realize they have some, you know, a bit more power than they realize. This is fascinating because actually responsibility is something that's often put upon companies to deliver. And you're putting it very much on shareholders to do yes, that. Um, and I think this is at the heart of your paper with Luigi Zingales on yeah. the new corporate governance, which you're going to present at the conference. Um, just expand on that idea and the thesis of the paper a little bit more. Well, the thesis of the paper is uh, it's really about shareholder democracy. So we, we stick with the idea of shareholder primacy. I mean, basically, we, we accept the argument that most companies are set up um, to act on behalf of shareholders. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be that way. Uh, you can always set up a company um, to act on behalf of the workers. It can be a worker owned mm -hmm. or consumer owned. Mm -hmm. We do see companies like that. We see nonprofits, mm -hmm. we see all sorts of things. But most of the biggest companies, the most important ones, have been set up um, in such a way that the shareholders have the votes. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I think Luigi and I do not want to interfere with that. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we accept freedom of contract mm -hmm. by and large. So um uh so that's um but then the question is okay um we need to find out then what the shareholders want so our, our article is about really moving towards shareholder democracy right. um as opposed to the you know the current situation has been to say it's obvious that shareholders want to be as rich as possible that, mm. that's sort mm. of the milton friedman position mm. and it's been accepted for a long time, but we think it's a mistake that actually mm. um, increasingly in a world where there are lots of externalities, you know, which um, affect us all and where governments are failing to act, mm. you know, a lot of people uh, feel that way, then, um, you know, share, it, it, we have to re-examine this idea that shareholders uh, necessarily want a company to deliver more profit at the expense of everything else, mm. and we need to ask them what, uh, ask the shareholders what they want, mm. and and so shareholder democracy would say let shareholders be a, be asked by management and and also be be able to express their views more about the kind of trade offs mm. they are willing to make. So I mean, you, you use a, a very memorable phrase, which is is around maximizing shareholder welfare as opposed to shareholder value. And I yep. can absolutely understand the rationale and logic for that. What in practice needs to happen for that to become a reality? What are some of the stepping stones towards that? Yes, well, when we talk about shareholder welfare, we're really just saying um, shareholders have more complicated preferences 
um, than money, and mm -hmm. and sometimes they would prefer a, their company, a company they um, own, along with a whole lot of other people. They would prefer that company, let's say, not to pollute mm -hmm. a, a river, say, and you know that might lead to a lower dividend. Mm -hmm. They might be willing to make that trade off, and mm -hmm. that's really a, uh, when we talk about that, we're saying it's shareholder welfare that, mm. that matters because in that case they are better off with a lower dividend and mm. but no pollution yep. um how can we bring it about uh well i think um you know one way is to let shareholders uh, express their views more and that can be done through shareholder proposals where mm -hmm. the, the shareholders basically say to the company um either give us information about what you're doing in mm -hmm. terms of um, your carbon foot footprint or your lobbying activities, lobbying activities which might improve the bottom line, but we might think are bad for society and we don't like them. So tell us about them. And then the next step would be uh, to have a shareholder resolution which says stop doing it. Mm. Um, in, in the US, these are not binding, mm. Mm. but um, that doesn't mean they can't be effective. And I think, uh, you know, one, one way they can be effective is, is if. Um, you put forward a an advisory resolution and the company ignores it, then you you could vote out the board of directors at the next meeting, and you know directors don't like that idea, mm -hmm. so they may actually listen to what shareholders are saying. So I think uh, a way forward is to have a, a greater ability for shareholders to express their views. Mm -hmm. And here, what's very important is that you know. A lot of the, the the major shareholders these days are institutions, mm. and um, Luigi's, in my view, is you have to go behind the institutions mm -hmm. to the people who are investing in those mm -hmm. in, institutions. And when you go all the way mm. um, back, you find ordinary people like you and me, mm. and we should mm. be able to mm. express our views more. I mean, currently, a lot of people don't even think about these yeah. things. Yeah, Professor Oliver Hart, thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. <laughs>